let's start the meeting. Welcome everybody to this meeting of the Cabinet. Thank you very much for your attendance. Um, I need to just record Councillor Phil Brightman's apologies, um, if they can be uh, registered. Um, so, item one is the Members' Code of Conduct, uh, declarations of interest to any Cabinet members need to declare any interests. Paul? Uh, celebrate that uh, event and say how much um, how lucky 
looking forward to the rest of the body of this year. And once again, to thank you know, Lucy and the team, uh, everybody who uh, has been part of, uh, part of this. I think it's going to be a, a wonderful year. Um, and um, uh, I'm going to look forward to coming to the events in a slightly different capacity than, than I've been coming to uh, so far. So I just wanted to say, I know Angie, you want to say a few words as well. Yeah, um, thanks Phil, yeah, I, you know, I just wanted to say how, how fabulous, um, you know, the launch was on, on Saturday evening, it was, it was just such a pleasure to kind of look at Hamilton Square, it was packed out with so many people, you know, people from, from all different areas of our, our borough, um, you know, moving on to watch people's faces, um, you know, with, with what was going on was, was phenomenal. And, you know, I think, I think our world of culture, um, you, know, <coughs> you know, kind of helps, helps us in our momentum around world's growth and, and regeneration plans that are rapidly moving forward. And you mentioned, Phil, about the kind of level of investment and return, um, <coughs> you know, that we get from, from these events, from attracting, um, you know, that um, quarter of a million um, visitors to, to the borough and we've got some fabulous things uh, coming up which we'll see in our, our events um, programme here. Um, so we've got um, the, the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra um, doing, a, doing a performance. Um, we've got fabulous food and drink festival, being a food and drink, I'm really looking forward to, um, to that. Um, we've got a great outside theatre performance. Um, in, in Birkenhead Park as well, and then we've got our favourites, the River Festival um, and, and the River of Light as well. Um, we've got the Tour of Britain coming up as well, um, that's, that's going to be here before we, before we know it as well, so you know and that, that is going to bring um, a huge amount of visitors. Um, here, here to the world. So, so the Borough of Culture is kind of really helping to put we're all on the map and, and you know, maintain us in, in that position. And, you know, I want to echo um, your thanks, Phil, um, you know, to Lucy and the team and Charlie. I know they've done a lot of stuff on, you know, around the media and social media as well. So, so thank you very much to them. Yeah, uh, and, and I think just to finish off, um, it was it was great that um, we had we got Paul Askew um, involved yes. in, in doing the kind of <coughs> food side, and he's obviously a, a, a nationally internationally known um, chef, yeah. and the, the, the sort of um, the uh, the, the uh, sort of fantastic uh, display of food that we put on Saturday night was I think um, was stunning. Yeah. It really wow. was. So it's great that, yeah. and then of course Paul is our is the chair of our visitor yeah. of visitor yeah. economy board. So yeah. it's great to have somebody so well known, and, uh, you know, involved in, yeah. in, in front and centre of the uh, of the borough of culture. And can I say, you know, again in terms of Lucy, Charlie, and the team, they were, their organisational skills are so good that they even organised on Saturday night that we had a mild evening. <laughs> <laughs> The weather was really, really nice, and uh, that that did that did make a difference. So I think all in all, uh, a brilliant event. So thank you and well done to the team, and uh, really look forward to the rest of our, our events in the world of country. Okay, so we'll we'll move on um, to item three, which is the uh, executive key decisions taken under delegated powers. There's just one. Is the word ways to work ESF program application. So, can we, can we know that, please? Can we hold it? Okay. Okay. okay, item four is the nomination of civic mayor and deputy civic mayor for the 2019 2020 municipal year. Um, Cabinet is requested to make nominations for these positions. So I'll move, obviously, Tony Smith, Councillor Tony Smith, uh, for the uh, Civic Mayor. And it's my pleasure um, to move um, for Deputy Civic Mayor, Councillor George Davis. So congratulations, George.
very well built. Uh, so that will be our, our nominations, which will be submitted to the annual meeting of the council. Is that agreed? Agreed. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay, on to cabinet members' reports. Um, so item five is Rural Waters Housing Infrastructure Fund. And George, you'll take us through this, please. Thank you. We all thank you much indeed. Um, it's it's a good report. Um, one we waited for for some considerable time. Um, we put a bid in for six million and four thousand pound, uh, and it has come to fruition. So um, straight away, I to ask people to look at page five, and um, you will see there the breakdown of that six million pound. Where it's going to be spent uh, to make sure that the infrastructure is ready for appeal to uh, commence their building and I'm absolutely delighted and it's the start of something major uh, in the world and I'm absolutely delighted people now will start to believe that things are taking place on the world and especially in that area. So thank you very much indeed. Okay, Anita? Yeah, I was delighted to, uh, to receive this Okay, so recommendations on page two, are those agreed? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, item six is getting rural waters, rural waters investment fund uh, application for financial assistance. And thank you, this is you please. Thanks, Phil. Um, so, uh, rural waters investment fund um, was established for the purpose of uh, promoting investment and economic growth within uh, the Wirral Waters Priority Regeneration Area, seeking to maximise the value of the designation of the area as part of the wider Mersey Waters um, Enterprise Zone. So Wirral Waters is, is one of the largest regeneration projects in the UK. Um, with its uh, unique water assets, Wirral Waters is in a prime position to drive um, growth across various sectors Included energy, uh, maritime, um, automotive, and the SME sector. So, Westflow is, is located um, at the western end of the Rural Waters area, and, and this industrial zone is the focus for being a park and being a stands for marine, energy, and automotive. So, the Mia Park will provide a focus in Liverpool City region for the development of key energy um, infrastructure within the marine, um, civil nuclear and renewable growth sectors. So the area in and around um, Birkenhead uh, dock system suffers so like other, many other dock areas around the country from a number of interrelated market failures um, resulted from, from decades of industrial decline and lack of investment. And so often new development in, in these dock areas is not viable without some form of public sector support. So the main part phase two itself comprises of 12 um, high quality, medium sized industrial units for light industrial uses. Um, the units, the 12 units all together, um, will give us um, approximately 69,000 square foot. Um, and we know that demand has already been identified um, amongst local national occupiers as well. Um, uh, the investment in Mere Park Phase 2 will also support the development of the skills factory and the modular development unit as well as other um, external infrastructure works. Um, and of course this is redevelopment of a site that is currently a derelict brownfield site as well. Um, so the ask is for um, a one and a half million pounds grant from the Rural Waters Investment Fund to be paid to Peel um, Investments Intermediate Limited to support the delivery of um, the Embark Phase 2. And the funding is going to meet the viability gap for the project, which is valued at just under 600 million pounds. And without the intervention and support 
um, there's a recognition that substantial, substantial economic regeneration benefits of rural waters won't be recognised. Um, our rural 2020 plan has economic growth at its heart. Um, our pledge is around greater job opportunities for all, um, ensuring that our workforce skills match business needs, um, increasing in mode of investment into the borough, and making sure that small businesses thrive. So the return on our um, investment here, um, the project's projected to create 67 new jobs during the construction phase, um, and 154 um, full-time equivalent jobs um, following completion. And of course there will be the additional um, business rates that, that come in over the years as well. Um, so to help fulfil the pledges I mentioned before, I'm asking Cabinet to agree um, to the two recommendations um, on page 10, please. Right, thank you, Angie. Sorry, I've just noticed, and I should have declared this at the start, I do apologise, I'm a non-exec director of the Chrysalis Fund, which has um, been involved in, in uh, this project, so I need to declare a personal interest to keep that's okay. So we've got that. Uh, but thanks, Angie, for that. Um, Lisa. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, I think it's really great to hear the good news stories from the public regarding uh, jobs, etc. And I know from the report that the 1.5 million grants will actually uh, give us double return. Yeah, and also that uh, any of the runs will actually be funded by appeal. So good news on that, definitely. Okay, anybody else? No? Okay, so the recommendations on that clause are on page 10. Can we agree them? Yeah. 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 So, um, on to item 7, which is Transport Plan for Growth 2019-20. Stuart, please. Thanks, Phil. Uh, another good news new story, uh, from my perspective. Um, so, obviously, we've been with Metro University Broadway and our partners in the Liverpool City region. Uh, we've been able to attract 1.1 million to work to bring back the program of transport and infrastructure improvements throughout the border as part of our Transport Plan for Growth. This is great news for investors and major investments into our transfer network to bring back real improvements. This will bring us to seeking cabinet's approval to accept the 1.1 million from the city region and the combined authority and allocate some of the projects and priorities assessed by the reports and independents. Uh, and basically, I ask the cabinet to approve the recommendations. This has about page 20 on the reports back. Okay, can we agree those recommendations? Okay. Yeah, it's good news, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Um, so that takes us on to item 8, Highway Structural Maintenance Programme 2019-20. Stuart, you again, please. Okay, thanks, Phil. And again, another very welcome to um, So the quality of roads and highways is a big priority for residents, uh, which puts us at the top of our agenda too. Rural residents expect to travel on a transport network which is safe, efficient and of high quality. This is what we work every day towards delivering, and despite ongoing ruthless Tory austerity, I'm delighted to report that we in our position to go even further. We are allocating nearly £85 million to ensure our transport infrastructure is fit for the future, improving our roads and making sure rural residents benefit from the first class uh, highway network. This investment is thanks to our work with Metro and Mayor Steve Robert and our colleagues across the city region. In addition to the funding we have to the city region, thanks to our good financial management, we are in a position to invest in the third power of the plan for our own capital and to go with the road network. This will help bring more further growth in our economy and ensure road users across the world continue to experience efficient and safer journeys on our highways. This welcome report seeks Cabinet's approval to accept the funding allocation from the Liverpool City Region Railway Command Authority allocated between roads, footways, and bridges. The report sets out Appendix 1 our ambitious program for our classified road network across the borough. Cabinet will be the amount of rolled asphalt where the carriageway is completely reconstructed in this program. A separate report following due course. Is that another program for our local road network? I'm proud to have the highway service be, being brought back in house. This ambitious program is testament to the greater control we have in dealing with contracts that directly cutting out the middleman and getting better life both socially and financially for the citizens of the world. I ask Cabinet to approve recommendations as set on page 52 of the report. Okay, can I just add my um, uh, support really for what I think is a, a really welcome injection of almost 5 million into our improving our highways and roads network. And I've said many times that you know this, this area is one of our 
getting, getting the basics right sort of uh, priorities and I think the, the spread of, of schemes which are included in the um, you know in the appendix one uh, across the borough shows that we are you know we are listening to residents concerns and we are addressing um, those those highways issues that people uh, tell us uh, so as well so in fact well done to you Stuart for uh, your leadership on this and I think it's another example of us working well with the combined authority to uh, secure this funding. Yeah. Okay, so can we agree recommendations on page 32? They agree? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, so that then takes us then to item 9, uh, which is uh, Children's Services Report to the New Multi-Agency Safeguarding Arrangements. So, Bernie, can you take us through this please? Thank you, sir. Um, the first thing I want to do before I, um, uh, I outline Start to reconfigure the current arrangements. 
And then August 31st, um, Colin Burrell Safeguard and Children's Board, staff, board stands down at midnight on that date. September the 1st, new Burrell Safeguard and Partnership arrangements become statutory. We believe these proposed arrangements will provide a strong base for effective leadership and direction for multi-agency safeguarding <coughs> arrangements in the world. The recommendations you will find are just that the cabinets approve uh, the proposed model and that this model is published ahead of the shadow implementation on the 31st of March um, and the full implementation on the 1st of September 2019 where the World Safeguard and Children Boards will be stood down. Okay, um, th thanks Bernie and obviously um, you know, we, we are responding to changes which um, the, the government have uh, introduced um, in, in uh, light of the, uh, the, the wood. <coughs> but can I just say, um, that, uh, I want to say a big thank you to, to Maggie, Maggie Atkinson, who's, the, uh, you know, the, the, who's been the chair of the, the Safeguarding Children's Board now for, for some time. And I've always found, and I'm sure you, you, you agree, Bernie, uh, Maggie's advice and guidance um, invaluable, really, in, in helping us navigate uh, our way through. Um, the uh, changes that we needed to make uh, in the light of the, the Ofsted report. So um, I think we should put on record our thanks to, to Maggie and, and uh, members, other members of the, um, of the uh, Safeguarding Board. And um, I'm pleased to see that we are a kind of head of schedule in terms of putting the new uh, arrangements in place um, that, that starts with, <coughs> you know, with effect from the 1st of September. So uh, I just want to take those, those comments. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Elisa? Fine stuff. Uh, yeah, I just really want to reiterate the uh, fact that we're ahead of time and this allows us to have that six hours of shadowing, you know, the greater shadow of two, the two systems, um, and that no additional financial uh, implications are taken to that as well. Uh, and I'd just really like to uh, thank you personally for, for all the work that you've put into this as a cabinet member put forward this portfolio. Thank you. Great. Okay, so recommendations on page 44, can we read them? Yeah, I can read it. Sorry. Sorry, 82. Thank you, Vivian. It's a good He's trying to test me on you. It's my last meeting. He's trying to test me. Okay. Right. So, item 10 um, is uh, Children Looked After Sufficiency Strategy 19. 2019 2022 and market position statement. Bernie? Thank you, Phil. Both the sufficiency strategy and the market position statements recognise um, the significant challenge we face in terms of our children looked after numbers. Um, we all know the 800 report costs are going down. And the challenge with the placement market at the current time. Um, our key response to these challenges is to look at further developments of our in-house <coughs> resources by first of all developing our in-house fostering service to ensure it is more responsive to the needs of our cohort um, of looked after children and also to develop the capacity in a residential market locally with a specific focus on the local authority recommissioning its own children's homes. While the strategy aims to ensure good quality and responsive <coughs> in-house services, it recognises that there is a continual, a continuing um, the need to commission services from external providers. Indeed, the sufficiency duty requires the local authority to work collaboratively across the all market sectors to um, secure local sufficiency. Therefore, the key part of the strategy also involves engaging with providers in an open and transparent way to better shape external markets, ensuring that our own um, procedures enable rather than hinder securing local placements but that, that better meets the needs of our people. <coughs> Uh, working collaboratively across the city region to develop opportunities for joint commission, particularly in relation to a more specialist type of provision. The market um, position statement outlines the main current types of placements used for children looked after here in the world. That's fostering, residential, supported accommodation and independent living. 
document also sets out the Council's commission and initial intentions based on the predicted demands of these placements. The statement outlines our overreaching commission and intentions for children looked after and in order to provide clear and focused aims to ensure that a good quality local placement for all children in our, in our care. The sufficiency strategy um, derives from the legal duty placed on the local authority to have a strategy placed that describes how we intend to ensure sufficient care placements for children in care. The statutory guideline sets out the requirements for local authorities to work with key partners to secure enough accommodation for children in care, which meets the needs of the children in the local authorities area. The strategy therefore sets out an overall approach to managing demand um, and focusing on the right solution and choice to provide children with the best possible outcomes. The provision is set out in the strategy with, key, with eight key objectives. <coughs> Supporting children, number one, supporting children to stay with their families where it is safe to do so. Number two is achieving permanency in a timely <coughs> manner through adoption and special guardianships. Number three is sourcing local placements. Number four is matching children with good quality placements to meet their needs. Number five is ensuring the existence of a range of targeted universal and specialised services that will be sponsored um, to children uh, when, where, they, where they need them. And number six is children looked after will be prepared for independence and healthy adulthood. Something that's really close to my heart that means. Strengthening, number seven is strengthening the strategic approach for commissioning and number eight is ensuring all external commissioners' placements are subject to a very robust and regular review. The strategy provides more details uh, on how these objectives will be achieved. Um, what we're asking is the recommendations are that we approve the looked after sufficiency tra strategy for 2019 to 2022, and that's attached, and then we approve the market position statement attached. Um, before I ask us to do like this, um, it's, it's, this is the last time I'm going to be delivering anything here at Council. Um, not by my choice, as everybody knows. Um, and I want to thank all of you, all of my Catholic colleagues, because we've worked as a fantastic team. And I was thinking about this this morning, I was thinking about none of us could have achieved the things that we achieved as a cabinet without good leadership. And although we are the leadership, we have one fabulous leader. It's not a good leader, it's a fabulous leader. And if you think about some of the stuff that we've done, um, I've, I've just written a few of the things down here while I was thinking before. Community wealth building, our social value policy. The community bank that's going to be coming on. Taking poor people out of council tax. The growth company, 20 million pounds for children's services. Children's services will be where it is without the 20 million. Um, a budget that's protected local services, even though we had to take so is it 250 million pounds out of yeah. everything that we've done, we've done with a labour stamp and labour yeah. value. And that doesn't take good leadership, that takes great leadership though. And I don't know, I'm, I'm sure other people will say it, but from the bottom of my head, <coughs> it's been an absolute privilege, a privilege to be your party. Um, and I wish nothing but the best. And I'm sure you and me will have a more relaxing time in the future. You by choice and me not by choice, but, but as we go forward. So I, I just, while I had a chance to do that, I must put that on that way. You've been a fabulous leader. Thank you. Oh, we have to go through this. Yeah. Let's <laughs> forget <laughs> Let's forget the recommendations of the report. Um, okay, th thanks for those very kind words. <coughs> for, for, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say a few things at the end uh, to kind of, uh, sort of build on that. But let's focus on this uh, this report. So, recommendations, Vicky, on page 82. Yes. Yeah, great. Uh, so, can we can we agree those recommendations? Yes. Really? Fantastic. <coughs> right. Okay. So that uh, we've got. Yeah, I'm just going to say a few words in the public bit before we. Um, uh, it is it is Bernie's last meeting, but it's also my last cabinet meeting, so it would be remiss of me uh, not just to say a few 
a few closing remarks before we, uh, we move on to, uh, to other, other passages. Um, and really, it's just for me to say, first of all, a big, big thank you to all my Canada colleagues. Unfortunately, Phil Bright was poorly today, so he's not able to be here. But I include Phil in that. You know, you've been a fantastic team, but not just you guys, but all the other cabinet members who've served in the cabinet under my leadership uh, over the last seven years. And, you know, you, you've mentioned a few of the, the kind of milestones, uh, Bernie, uh, you know, the, the rural plan, um, you know, the 20 pledges, which um, I'm absolutely confident we will deliver on the uh, due date of 2020. Um, you know, the, the, the uh, wonderful work we, that Jeanette, you laid on in terms of putting the council on a secure financial footing. I remember when I took over in 2012, uh, within three months, we found out that we've got an overspend of 12 million, so um, I'm glad we've moved, we've moved forward. Uh, but then all the, the, the really positive stuff, you know, you mentioned, I mean, the children's services turnaround has been nothing short of stunning, and I pay tribute not just to Bernie, but to Paul, Paul Boyce at the back for the, the leadership. Uh, that you guys have given to that service, and I'm confident that when we're reinspected, we'll come out of intervention. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but no, a big thank you. Uh, I, I think that's been um, that's been a real success story. Just you know, changing the kind of culture and, and the the innovation in that in that service has been has been absolutely brilliant. And then you mentioned you know we've we've had to think outside the box because of the government's funding cuts. We we all know that and. Um, I, I just think the, the rural growth company is probably the, the best example of that. Where we've got a model of working, we couldn't couldn't go on the way we were. We weren't maximising the opportunities to regenerate the borough. So you know to have that in place now, and Jim, with your leadership, and uh, with the prospect prospect of not just bringing jobs and investment into the borough and helping local businesses and local people, but returning a revenue yeah. to the council yeah. to replace that that lost. Money um, has, has been brilliant, and that you know, will leave a legacy, I think, for, for future generations. But you know, we, we mentioned the work um, around highways, sure, that you led. I think we're in a much better place. And, and Chris, you know, the, the challenges under adult social care. We know we've got a kind of social care crisis in this country, and you know, you and, uh, and Graham have kind of led that service um, to, to to one where I think we can rightly be proud of the fact that we. We now provide good quality services for our, our older people and our people with learning disabilities and, and so on and so forth. So that's been a success story. Um, Anita, you came in at the halfway through the year with uh, with some challenges around the environment portfolio, but I think you know, <laughs> I think you've done a, a fantastic job. And um, you know, again, uh, it's the year of the environment. We've got some some wonderful initiatives which, which you're leading on, and I look forward to them coming to fruition. Um, Paul, you've led on the, the law and order portfolio, that's a key priority for our residents, and you know, I pay tribute to the work that you've done around the, um, you know, the, the community safety hub um, is, is, is a brand leader and has been replicated by other local, local authorities up and down the land, and um, you know, that's something we can rightly be proud of. And George, you know, um, I, I wish you all the best in your in your forthcoming year as deputy mayor. But I thank you for the work that you've done leading our housing um, uh, efforts. And obviously, we've got some big challenges ahead on the local plan. But um, I think you can see now I've got examples in my ward of um, really good quality new housing being being built, providing affordable housing for for our residents in many parts of the borough. And, and that's um, uh, down to, to, to the work that you've led. So thank you to you. And, and thanks to uh, Phil Brightmore, who led the work on, on that big piece of uh, transformational work around um, the leisure uh, and, uh, services portfolio. And, and we've already uh, seen some of those initiatives uh, coming to fruition. So, um, a lot to be proud of, but I couldn't finish my comments by, um, again, I said at the full council meeting. Um, I need to say thank you to you, Eric, um, as Chief Executive, and, and we've got our, one of our Chief Officers in the back, because without you guys helping us as elected members, we could not have done any of this. So I've got to say a big, big tribute to you as Chief Executive and the senior leadership team, and all of our staff, actually, who day in, day out do a fantastic job 
of, 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 leaving, of leaving the borough. Yeah. And on that note of, of staff, um, I will say finally, before I would shut up, a uh, big thank you to, to three people. Um, first of all, Fiona, Fiona Johnson. Fiona, this is your last ever cabinet meeting, am I right? And I just want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to, to you for the fantastic work that you've done uh, on behalf of Wirral, um, both in your, your roles as Director of Public Health, but well, latterly leading a lot of the big kind of corporate initiatives that we've um, been developing. And, and I know personally, because kind of I've worked with you around the world together, uh, initiative which is a, I think, a really exciting um, model of working with uh, our residents and our partners and, and you know, we've said from day one that the Wirral Plan and all of our pledges and priorities, Council can't do that on its own. You know, it needs to be working with our residents, with our partners, and you've kind of led the charge really on making sure that everybody is signed up to that um, that model, and and that we've got um, we've got a kind of resilient communities. Communities are more able to do things for themselves because we haven't got the, the funding to, to, to do them for, for, for you know for them going forward. And I think um, you know the World Together initiative. I'm sure will go from strength to strength, and it's the, down you know to, to the leadership that you give. So I, I really want to thank you on behalf of all cabinet members and wish you a very happy a happy retirement. Maybe we'll bump into each other somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry? Walk in the dark. Walk in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you to, to, to Fiona. A uh, couple of other people before I finish, officers. Um, again, these are kind of unsung heroes, really, but when I've got that for I want to give them some, some credit to them and thanks. So Lindsay Roberts is, is, is at the back. She provides kind of support and help and, uh, you know, is, 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 is keeps us all in line in terms of cabinet and leadership. And, and you know, I want to thank Lindsay for, for her efforts. Um, you know, Lindsay, you know, you're the, one of the sort of vital cogs in this in this operation. So thank you to you. And then finally, um, it would be really remiss of me if I didn't mention, um, please forgive me for using this opportunity, um, the, the person who runs the Lake Group office, Barbara Turner. You know, Barbara is an absolute star and certainly as leader of a leader. I couldn't do my job without Barbara making sure that I'm kind of organised and having everything, you know, all the, the, the reports ready and reminding me of deadlines that I have to meet for council and budget and, you know, just, just putting stuff in my diary so I know what, I know what I'm going to do from one day to the next. So I, I want personally, I know, you know, other colleagues, I'm sure will echo this, a big, big thank you to Barbara for all the support that she's given, not just me, but they're all kind of, those are all group members really, yeah. my group. So for many, many years, um, Barbara has been working for the authority for 30 years this year, so she, she deserves lots of plaudits and, and thanks. Um, so I think that's it really. Um, just, I, I just want to say, um, I really miss this place, I really will. I've been working with some fantastic people. Uh, Bernie, I'll be sorry to see you go, because um, you've done a terrific job. Um, but, but, you know, again, we'll, we'll have more time to, to catch up with each other after this. But I wish, I wish um, everybody and the council all the very best for the future. I said at the council meeting, I believe we're all, uh, we're all's best days are ahead of it. We've got fantastic opportunities. You know, the Borough of Culture, if I can finish where I started off, has put us on the map. And, and I think we can rapidly become, you know, uh, one of, if not the, standing authority in the Liverpool city region and if not the country. So I wish